for kids who want so lucky Variety strives to give them a future and brighten their lives Variety, variety We thank you all who give so generously Just think of those coaches that stretch for a mile It makes you feel good just to see those kids smile It's up to you, there's so much we can do and we do it for variety. Hi, my name is Barry Crocker and I do a lot of work for the Variety Club. They're my special kids. And so today for them, I'm going to read a passage out of this beautiful book called The Magical Scarecrows. And this is chapter four. Are you ready for this, kids? Here we go. The magpies were meeting even at night, these black birds could be seen because of the distinctive white stripe. A plot was brewing. Ooh, the magpies had a plan. This meeting was taking place near the Tower of London, where once upon a time prisoners were taken to be beheaded and their heads chopped off. Today, it's a tourist attraction, and it's also the home of the spectacular Crown Jewels. Magpies are famous among birds for having a weakness for bright and shining things. A little bit like your Auntie Lynn, I think, yeah. Well, they had seen the crown jewels and were planning to steal them. It was a daring plan, but one the magpies thought would be well worth it. Back at Leeds Castle, Racy Rowe had decided it was time he took a holiday. The farmer was away and so he wouldn't miss him. And it was winter so all the crops didn't need protecting. Having thought about it for a while, Racy decided he would travel to London to see what a big city really looked like. Spliff had told Racy about a carriage train that went from near Leeds Castle into London at night. Spliff had been brought up in London where she was a young cat, so she could tell Racy about a secret place she knew where he could hide during the day. The place was called Madame Tussauds. Now this is a famous wax museum where there are models of many famous people. People seeing another model in the museum would think nothing of it. Perhaps people would think this was the scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz. Racy should be quite safe there. The journey to London was quite bumpy. And in the back of the carriage train, and Racy found pieces of straw were flying off him and all over the place. He had quite a time gathering himself once the train stopped. Even though this made him quite tired, he wasted no time in getting around London to see the sights. <laughs> the first place Racy wanted to see was the Tower of London. He had heard people in the Leeds Castle talking about the tower and it sounded like a fascinating place for him. The streets of London were noisy at night, not like where Racy lived. Big red buses and shiny black taxis drove around the streets. There were lots of lights and lots of people too. Racy would have to be careful not to be seen. Spliff had advised Racy he would be best to travel by the River Thames because not many people went to the river at night. Good idea. She was right. Spliff was a clever cat. Racy found his way to the river and discovered this was quite a comfortable place to walk along under the cover of darkness. As he passed a moored boat on the river, he could hear chattering inside. This was the chattering of birds, not people, a sound to which he was very familiar, very familiar to Racy. Happy to have found some bird friends in London, Racy approached the boat. But as he drew closer, he could hear what they were saying and, and he quickly realized these were not good birds. These were the magpies. And he overheard their conversation about a plan to steal the crown jewels. Oh my goodness, thought Racy. What should I do? The first thing he thought of was to get the get to the tower as quickly as he could. That way he could see if the magpie's plan was one that might work. The tower was still and quiet. Racy felt quite safe having a look around. 
the ancient monument and tourist attraction looked even older than Leeds Castle. Although Racy hadn't thought that it was possible for anything to be older than Leeds Castle. Oh, this was a very imposing building. Suddenly, a noise startled him. Intruder alert! Intruder alert! A rough voice squawked through the darkness, turning the page now. Racy looked around quickly. Oh no, he thought, I've been seen. As if from nowhere, a group of ravens were suddenly all around him. Ravens are big blackbirds, which look a lot like crows. And this is what Racy took them for. Intruder, intruder, squawked one of the ravens. I, 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 I didn't mean to intrude, said Racy politely. What are you doing here? demanded a raven. I, 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 I've come to foil a crime. Crime? Crime? What crime? I, I overheard the magpies making plans to steal the crown jewels. What? shouted the ravens. Steal the crown jewels? That will never do, never do. We must stop them. Well, I agree, said Racy. I'd be happy to help. Allow me to introduce myself. The ravens looked at Racy very suspiciously. Why should we trust you? I understand, nodded Racy. I realize crows don't like me very much. Crows? Crows? yelled a raven. I fellas, he thinks we're crows. The ravens all began to laugh. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, if you're not crows, began Racy, what are you? The ravens were having trouble containing their laughter. Some were rolling on their backs with tears running down their beaks and they were laughing so loud. Oh, that's a good one, crows! The raven tried to regain his composure. My name is Larry. I'm the oldest raven living at the tower. This here is Grog, so named because he's partial to visiting an East End pub called the Rose and Punch Bowl. Isn't that right, Grog? Yeah, answered Grog. As you can see, continued Larry, he's been there this evening. Over here are Charlie and Reese. How, how, how do you do? bowed Charlie politely. And behind them are Eugene and Jackie. Lucky they're still with us, actually. Oh, inquired Racy. Why's that? Well, the governor of the tower had them in close arrest for conduct unbecoming tower residents. Pompous old windbag. <laughs> all they did was fight back when some horrid child decided to chase them all around the grounds. Anyway, they've been reprieved. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that smile, Racy. But what do you all do here? Oh, you don't know much, do you? Responded Larry smartly. Ravens have been associated with the tower for over 900 years, since King Charles II was told that if the ravens leave the tower, a great disaster will befall Britain. Since that time, there's never been less than six ravens at the tower. The tower master even clips our wings to make sure we stay here. <laughs> Not that we'd ever leave. Three square meals a day and all the attention a bird could want. Oh, I see, said Racy. That's, that's, that's fascinating. Fascinating, he says. Didn't even know what a raven was a moment ago. <laughs> Oh, I do apologise, replied Racy in a humble tone. But I live in a country and, well, we know nothing of such things. Well, that's that pretty heck obvious, slurred Grog. Well, I think you're all being extremely rude, scolded Reese. Racy has obviously come here with good intentions. It's not his fault he doesn't know about the legend. Anyway, he's not so wrong mistaking us all for crows. We are distant cousins after all. Cousins, murmured Racy, wondering for a moment 
what it might be like to, to have a cousin. Back in Australia, the birds had activated their plan to find Cruz a relation. The word had gone out far and wide, even to birds who travelled to other countries. Carrier pigeons were one such type of bird, and they would soon be travelling to England for a competition. In the magpie's criminal lair, they were all congratulating themselves for devising such a clever plan. So, said one, tomorrow night, the jewels will be ours. Ours, cried the magpies in chorus. And those stupid ravens won't be able to stop us, cause they can't fly. <laughs> The magpies all laughed so hard, they started coughing and, <laughs> and spluttering from the feathers that went flying as they rolled around. Imagine a bird that can't fly! They cawed cruelly. Racy was pacing the grounds of the tower. He always paced when he, when he needed to think. What are the magpies afraid of? He asked the ravens. Guns, answered Eugene. Cats, added Reese. Cats, thought Racy. If only Spliff were here now. But we don't got any guns or any cats, so how are we going to stop them? The ravens were now growing concerned. It was their job to look after the tower. They couldn't allow the magpies to steal the crown jewels. Oh, uh, what about me? asked Racy. I'm supposed to be a scarecrow, something which scares birds away. The ravens all laughed. We're city birds. We're not going to be frightened off by a man made of straw. Racy hung his head. Was that necessary? Reese complained. He's only trying to help. The ravens looked ashamed. So they should. That's all right, said Racy. I understand. But tell me, do any other birds visit the tower? Oh, spatters and pigeons. Nothing that's going to scare off a magpie. We need a very big bird for that. Huge. Hmm, thought Racy, a big bird. He'd heard there were big birds at London Zoo. I have an idea. Racy pulled a pencil from his pocket and wrote a message down. Give this to one of the pigeons tomorrow to take to the zoo. Pigeons like to carry messages. Tell them this one is very important. What is it? asked Larry. You'll see. Racy felt so helpless having to spend the day in Madame Tussauds. He wondered if his message was going to get through, and if it did, would his idea work? Ooh, it was a cold winter's day. So Racy hoped the zoo would be quiet. He was sure his plan would work. Yes, quite sure. At the zoo, the pigeons had taken Racy's message to the cage of Goldie, a golden eagle. It was well known that Goldie was able to leave her cage whenever she pleased. Her keepers never could figure out how she did it. But every once in a while, Goldie felt that she needed the freedom to fly over London and, and see what was going on. Today, however, the pigeons were asking her to leave her cage for a very different reason. Goldie read the message. Ooh, this is very serious, Goldie said in a regal tone. The eagle is a very regal bird and therefore would understand the importance of preventing such a crime. Very serious indeed, she repeated. Tell your friend I shall meet him as soon as the sun sets this evening. Right-o, said the pigeon in an English cockney accent and race off to pass the message on. Back at the tower, there was a special event for that day the tower was playing host to the International Carrier Pigeons competitions. Pigeons had flown in from all over the world to enter it. There was much excitement as pigeons from all different countries met one another. And as pigeon is a universal language, they could speak to one another quite freely, which is often not the case when human beings meet from different countries. I say, 
said an English pigeon with a particularly refined accent. Have you heard about the caper? No sport. What caper's that? An Australian colleague answered. The raid on the tower, of course, replied the English pigeon. Strike a light, a raid on the tower? The Australian pigeon seemed quite excited. Yes, continued the English pigeon. Those dreadful magpies are planning to steal the crown jewels, and, and we are part of the plan to stop them. Good on ya, said the Australian pigeon. And how are you going to do that then? Well, it was all Racy's idea, really, explained the English pigeon. Who's Racy when he's at home then? Racy, the scarecrow, the English pigeon explained, becoming a little tired of the Australian pigeon's ignorance. But the English pigeon reminded himself, the English must be tolerant of people from other countries who don't know English ways. It isn't their fault that they're foreign after all. Perhaps it was only jet lag or wing lag. Suddenly the Australian pigeon was quite dumbstruck. He looked at his new English friend for a moment before asking, Are you telling me you have a living scarecrow in this country? Well, answered the English pigeon proudly, I wouldn't really have expected you to know about that. He is unique, you know. Ah, that's what you think. The Australian pigeon was so excited, he started flying in circles while muttering under his breath, Typical Pommy, <laughs> thinking they've got something over here no one else could have. <laughs> what on earth is the matter with you? asked the English pigeon, thinking this was very undignified behaviour. A magical scarecrow, a magical bloomin' scarecrow, cried the Australian pigeon. Hush, whispered the English pigeon. You don't want to alert the magpies to our plan, do you? Oh, um, no, no, excuse me. The Australian pigeon settled down, remembering how serious the situation was. But a magical scarecrow? Ha! Well, yes, said the English pigeon. I thought you'd be impressed. Well, it's not that, he blurted. Turning aside under his breath, he said, You daft pommy. Turning once again towards the English pigeon, the Australian pigeon announced, It's that I'm on a mission myself to find a magical scarecrow Another one for our friend in Australia. You have magical scarecrows in Australia? asked the English pigeon, with perhaps a, a touch of indignation. Just one. Well, one that we know of. And he's, uh, he's all alone in the world. We wanted to find him one of his own kind. Gosh, said the English pigeon, this is tremendous. I can't wait to tell Racy. He'll be so excited to find out that he has a relative. I say, chaps, the English pigeon called to his friends, you're never going to guess the most extraordinary news I've just heard. It was dusk in London. Goldie the Eagle quietly escaped from the cage at the zoo while the magpies were gathering to begin their assault on the tower. Racy had freed himself from Madame Tussauds and began racing towards the scene of the intended crime, still not knowing if his plan was going to work. Goldie arrived at the tower first and landed gracefully on the lawn by Larry. Good evening, Larry, said Golding in her regal voice. Ooh, you honour us with your presence, if I may say so, ma'am, replied Larry. Nonsense. I'm happy to help. We can't have the riffraff thinking they can do what they please now, can we? Quite right, agreed Larry. And look, here's Racy. Goldie looked around to see Racy arrive at the tower. Racy was, was quite shocked for a moment. He'd never seen a bird this big before. She stood quite as tall, as tall as his chest. It, 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 it's an honour to meet you, Miss Goldie, said Racy, bowing politely. And you, young man, I've heard a great deal about you, replied Goldie. Look, I managed to borrow these from the Wax Museum. Racy pulled out a couple of old pistols from his jacket. They're not real, he explained, but it might just help frighten the magpies away if they think they're real. Good show 
said Dolly approvingly. So, do we all know what we have to do? The ravens nodded. Good show, repeated Goldie. Well, said Racy, I suggest we take up our places. As the magpies approached the tower, they were laughing and joking with one another about how easy this was going to be. <laughs> Look, those daft ravens aren't even awake. <laughs> he's, he's dead as a doornail down there, observed the lead magpie. Come on, lads, charge! The magpies began swooping on the tower. Whoa, 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 hey, whoa, hey, what was that? cried a magpie as a stone hit him on the side. Ow, ow! cried other magpies. Eugene and Reese were using elastic bands to fire pebbles at the magpies to unbalance them in flight. Right, you pesky varmints, called Racy, brandishing his pistols. We'll have none of your sort here. Racy was copying the language of an American cowboy. He'd heard someone using this language in Madame Tussauds earlier that day. Stone the crows, cried a magpie. Look, it's a, it, it's a pistol brandishing scarecrow. I, 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 I don't believe it. At that moment, Goldie swooped from the top of the tower and caught two magpies, one in each of a huge claws. Ready? called Goldie. Ready, replied Larry. Larry was perched on a large picnic hamper he'd borrowed from one of the tourists that day. As Goldie swept down with the magpie in each claw, Larry opened the hamper and Goldie dropped the magpies inside. And next, called Larry with a cheeky wink of his beady eye. Up Goldie soared again, grabbing another two magpies. Whoa, 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 what's, what's going on? gasped the lead magpie. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm out of here. Come back, you coward, called Racy after the leader. Not blue and lightly, not blue and lightly, called the lead magpie as he led the retreat away from their foiled crime. The next morning, the tower master arrived to find everything in order, except for one thing. There was a large picnic hamper by his office with a sign on it which read, Attention the tower master. Well, I'll be, exclaimed the tower master. Whatever could this be? Slowly he opened the hamper. Inside, there were a dozen magpies, all with their wings clipped so they couldn't fly. All the newspapers reported the escape of Goldie the Eagle. What the humans didn't know, though, was why Goldie had escaped. Had they really known, they would never have said such awful things in the press about her. They said she was a bad bird for having escaped again. Goldie didn't mind. She'd heard people talking about her escape as they passed by her cage the next day and smiled knowing that she had helped to preserve one of the national treasures for the children to enjoy. Meanwhile, Racy went home to Leeds thinking London was much too hectic for him. He preferred the peace and quiet of country life. Close on his heels were the carrier pigeons, for they had a story to tell him about a new adventure he was yet to experience. At last, Racy Rose and Cruz were going to learn they were not alone in the world. But being on opposite sides of the world, how were they ever going to be able to meet? I hope you enjoyed our little story, The Scary Tower. And remember, support the Variety Club, the Children's Variety Club, and I'll love you forever. Now, I'm off to another story. This is fun. What's next? Ooh.